Peeps, it's Paul, and I am here at uh, the Gator Theater on Little Creek Base in Norfolk, Virginia, and I am here to see a free screening of Suicide Squad. It is Saturday, July 30th. Um, obviously, no video photography or any photography is allowed in the theater, so I'm going to check in with you after the film and uh, give you my full review. Really looking forward to seeing it. As you can see, got my Joker shirt. Hopefully it's a good film. I'll let you know in a minute. I am back home from seeing a free advanced screening of 3D of Suicide Squad. Um, I just saw it on Little Creek Base in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, and uh, it, it is Saturday, July 30th. The movie comes out next Friday, August 5th. Uh, so I was uh, you know, really grateful to be able to get out there and, and watch the film. And... Uh, I'm here with my initial thoughts. I just came home from the movie, so I, I just finished it up about 20 minutes ago. Um, I'm going to stay as spoiler-free as I can um, for the first part of the review. I'll get into some mild spoiler territory at the end. Um, but to be honest, it's kind of one of those films that, other than a couple of things that you probably already have read online, there's really not much to spoil um, in that... You know, it's not like you're going to randomly get the Justice League coming in or there's not any cool cameos or anything like that that haven't already been spoiled uh, online by paparazzi photos or by the company themselves. And so, Suicide Squad, directed by David Ayer, who also directed the movie Fury um, and uh, was a writer on a number of uh, cop dramas and uh, stars Will Smith, Margot Robbie, Joel Kinnaman, um, Jay Courtney... Uh, like I mentioned previously, Ben Affleck is in it. Um, and Jared just, uh, Leto. Jared Leto. Yes, Jared Leto. How can I forget Jared Leto? Um, I mean, I, I, there's, like I said, my brain is still scrambled from, from this movie. Um, so, Suicide Squad. First 20 minutes of the movie are getting you introduced to the squad. There's a lot of flashback sequences where they hop back and say, here's, where, how, here's Harley's story. Here's Captain Boomerang's story. Here's um, Deadshot's story. And so each of them get kind of a little vignette at the beginning of the film. And I will tell you, watching the beginning of the film, I was actually starting to get concerned. Because it's a very frenetic pace, filmed a lot like a music video. Diff you know, crazy cool special effects and things going on on the screen all over the place. Uh, wildfire editing. Um, and, you know, kind of like a commercial. It, it felt like a commercial. Uh, but once that first 20 minutes is over, it kind of slows down and we get into the story proper. Um, start off with a couple of things that happened in the first 20 minutes. You get your first taste of Jared Leto's Joker. He is in the film a lot more than I expected him to be. And uh, he's fantastic. Uh, I actually thought Jared Leto's Joker was really, really good. Um, he's, he's not the Heath Ledger Joker, but he's just as creepy in certain moments. There are certain moments where he's on screen and you get really uncomfortable. Um, and then there are moments where you kind of feel like you're looking at the animated uh, Mark Hamill, you know, Bruce Timm uh, Joker. Uh, and they have a, a number of callbacks to th that Joker with him and his interaction with Harley Quinn, um, who is a Bruce Timm creation. And Margot Robbie, fantastic as Harley Quinn. Uh, I don't know that they could have done any better casting. She totally, totally embodies that role. Um, from her, you know, her voice to her actions to her mannerisms to everything she looks like uh, and dresses as in the film. Margot Robbie, fantastic as, uh, as Harley Quinn. We also get introduced to Will Smith's Deadshot. Um, now a lot of people were crying foul because Deadshot was already introduced in Arrow, the TV show, and now they have Will Smith playing Arrow, and folks were worried, okay, if it's Will Smith, is this going to become the Will Smith show? Um... And I would say, kind of. Um, if you're not a Will Smith fan, Will Smith is in the film quite a bit. He is um, one of the main characters, but it is not a Will Smith film. It's not his sole show. It's still an ensemble cast, but obviously because he's got the star power, uh, things are kind of weighted towards him a little bit. Uh, but he's, he's great in the film, too. Um, he is Will Smith. <laughs> he's, he's what you expect from Will Smith. Um, but he has a, a you know a number of emotional beats in the film. Um, if you're familiar with Deadshot, you're familiar with his family and his daughter and, and things like that um, that are straight out of the comic book, straight out of Arrow. And you get a lot of that in this film, and Will Smith sells it very well. 
I thought he did a great job in this film. Um, I thought all the actors, all around, did a fantastic job in this film. Um, if there was a weak link in the chain, uh, I believe it would be uh, Claire Delavine, who played the Enchantress. Um, I won't, I'm going to avoid spoilers on the Enchantress's role in the film. I will just say that out of the, all the characters in the film, I felt like hers was um, the least well represented. Um, she felt very one note. Uh, there wasn't a lot to her. Even though they tried to give her a lot, it just, her, her character just, when she was the Enchantress, um, just didn't really command the screen like some of the other st actors did. And that could just be that, you know, there were so many great actors on screen, she just kind of got lost in the, in the, in the ensemble. But, um, she was kind of a, a weaker link in the chain. All right, folks, I'm doing this poorly lit video because I forgot to mention two things that I really wanted to mention in my review, um, but I forgot. One is that the audience cheered multiple times while watching this film. Um, of course, at the end, and you know, preview screenings are preview screenings, so people are really into it more. I don't know that it's gonna happen in your screening or your viewing of the film, um, but one, cheer one thing that got a lot of cheers from the crowd involved Deadshot, and another involved the Joker. Um, so people really seemed to enjoy those characters, and there was, uh, and I, I was one of the people cheering. Both scenes were, were cheer-worthy. So, actually there were three, because one involved Harley Quinn. So the audience cheered a lot during the film, deservedly so. Um, and one more thing I want to mention that I forgot to mention in my review, which is the soundtrack. Um, the film has an amazing soundtrack. Um, you know, I know there's a soundtrack coming out that has all the original music that was made for the film with 21 Pilots and Panic at the Disco and a couple of other bands. Um, but there is a lot of catalog music in the film, um, you know, from uh, 80s, 70s music, and uh, it all is used to great effect. And the score of the film, who I, you know, I, I feel really bad, but I'll post on the video who it is, who did the score of the film, is also great. Um, one of the scenes that people were cheering on uh, involved, like I said, in De Deadshot. And I think part of the reason people cheered was because of the score was so effectively used in that scene. Um, so I will definitely be picking up the score for this film as well as the soundtrack. All right, so let's uh, let's hop back to the review and uh, just wanted to give those follow-up thoughts that I forgot to mention. So Suicide Squad tells the story of Amanda Waller and Rick Flagg getting this team together, Task Force X, um, to... This is a, a response to the fact that Superman has died at the end of Batman vs. Superman. This very much takes place right after Batman vs. Superman. Superman is dead. The government is is putting together uh, a team of metahumans and the worst of the worst um, to basically control them and send them on the missions that uh, that they need to send them on metahuman related missions. And so, Suicide Squad is is assembled in the first half hour or so of the film and uh, put sent on a rescue mission uh, to Midway City. Um, where uh, an evil being has, has kind of taken over the city and turned much of, many of its inhabitants into monsters. Um, if you've seen the, the trailers, you see there's a lot of like slicing up creatures and things like that. Um, the film is very, at some point, the film very much turns into almost like a zombie film in that the, you know, the inhabitants are turned into these creatures and there's quite a lot of this survival horror action, Resident Evil type uh, action where the, the, except with superheroes or supervillains, I should say, where the supervillains are bite, battling these creatures. There's a number of shootouts and things like that um, where there's just swarms of these creatures coming at them and they just have to take them out. So, um, let's see. So many things I want to talk about, like <laughs> I said. Um, so that's the main gist of the story. It's you've got your intro, and then you've got them on this rescue mission in the city, and then they have to stop the uh, the 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 main villain who has uh, put together these creatures and taken over the city. And the reason I'm not getting into the main villain is because that veers into spoiler territory. Um, but it's not it's not someone you haven't already seen in the trailers, so you're not going to come go into the film and go, oh wow, I didn't see that coming. Um, I just don't want to spoil it here. Uh, some things that I will get into mild spoiler territory here. If you haven't read anything on the film, if you're avoiding things on the film, 
you've been warned. For the next couple of minutes, I'm going to go into spoiler territory a bit. Um, but again, this is nothing that hasn't already been revealed online. Um, one is that Batman is in the film. Not a lot. There are a couple of scenes with Batman, um, and when he's on screen, each scene is very cool. Um, you know how he plays into the story. Uh, I would say, which I'll get. I'll, actually, I'll get to that in a minute. But Batman is in the film, as is the Flash, which was already announced. Uh, the Flash makes an appearance in the film, and I'm not talking Barry Allen. The Flash makes an appearance in costume in the film. Um, and interacts with Captain Boomerang, and it's 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 very cool. And um, I wish they hadn't revealed that online already, or else I wouldn't be talking about it here. I wouldn't ruin it for you guys. Uh, but it's already been online. Uh, but it is a very very cool scene, even knowing it's coming. So let's go back to uh, Jared Leto as the Joker. Lots of concern. As you can see, I'm wearing the shirt with the tattoos. Lots of concern about the tattoos and the look of the new Joker. Um, I will say, in the context of the film, it makes sense. Uh, you know, the Joker is very much presented in such a way as a crime boss, just a really insane one. Um, Jared Leto does a fantastic job. It is not a Joker like we've seen before. You know, you had the Jack Nicholson Joker, um, and then you had the Heath Ledger Joker. And Heath Ledger's Joker was, you know, the anarchist, right? Um, the Jack Nicholson Joker was kind of, uh, uh, you know, late 80s, you know, somewhere between the, the darkness of, the, of those Batman films and the Cesar Romero Joker uh, of the 60s. You had this Jack Nicholson Joker. But Jared Leto's Joker is kind of an entirely different animal. Um, but he's still quintessentially Joker at the same time. Um, it is... He, he, he presents the Joker as this sleazy but charming um you know funny but crazy i mean it, it is it is exactly what you expect from the joker um and i gotta say it was fantastic i i, I loved his performance i loved margot robbie as harley quinn um i loved will smith as Deadshot. uh you know the, the, the those three being kind of the key components of the film i think they did a fantastic job um the direction by david ayer like I mentioned earlier, the first 20 minutes or so of the film, very frenetic, very bang, 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 pacing um, and editing. And I, you kind of wonder if that's going to be what you're in for for the entire film. It's not. It does slow down a little bit once we get into the main story. Um, I do wish the villain had been more fleshed out. I do wish the villain had been more of a presence. Um, but I feel that's kind of something that seems to be regular in most superhero films nowadays is that the villain is kind of weak um the exception being batman versus superman honestly with lex luther um i enjoyed his his character but in this film the villain is kind of more of the same type of villainous character that we get um in other films just kind of a generic villain you don't really know the motivation but you're not supposed to care i guess because they're evil and they're just doing evil things um the film, uh, you can tell the cast is having a good time. Uh, there is a, a genuine chemistry between the cast members that, um, if you've read any of the stories, they did kind of have this familial bond on set and got to know each other and became friends. And you can tell that in the film, um, that they do grow closer as a family. Um, not everyone makes it out of the film alive, which, you know, um, it's, it's called Suicide Squad. Some of them don't make it out. And so... I was I was kind of glad to see that because you don't know who's going to make it out and who's not. You kind of assume that the big wigs are going to make it out, but some of the other side characters um, don't necessarily make it out. And I will say uh, they spent a great deal of time fleshing out some characters that don't necessarily make it out of the film. And uh, I appreciated that. I appreciated that these were not just villains, that they all had some type of backstory. And they're all tragic backstories. No, I shouldn't say all of them, but most of them have a tragic backstory that kind of gives an emotional weight to the movie um, that I don't think it would have otherwise had. Uh, so, question that people are going to say, uh, or are going to ask, probably, is, is it better than Batman vs. Superman? And I will say it's hard to say. I really like Batman vs. Superman. I feel like it's, you know, it's Batman and it's Superman. Um, it is more fun than Batman vs. Superman. It is um, not quite as weighty. It is, though it is dark it is darkly humorous 
Um, so it is a very different film. If I were to compare it to anything, I'd say somewhere midway between Guardians of the Galaxy and Deadpool, you have Suicide Squad. It's much more adult than Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's nowhere near as adult as Deadpool. Um, but it does have some moments that are inappropriate for children. It is a PG-13 film, and it, it is a strong PG-13. It's not R-rated, but you feel like with very little effort, it could have been R-rated. Um, there is a decent amount of profanity. There's no real blood to speak of other than monster blood. But um, if you're worried about taking your kids to the film, um, I'd say if you felt like Batman vs. Superman was appropriate for them, then you'll feel like this is fine. Um, it's certainly not more adult than Batman vs. Superman, um, and certainly nowhere near as adult as Deadpool, like I said. But it is a, it is certainly PG-13, um, and, it, and it wears that on its sleeve. Um, some uh, some negatives for me, like I said, was the, the first 20 minutes, um, the villain. Uh, it gets a, there's a little there's a bit of a pacing issue in that if that first 20 minutes is so frenetic. And, uh, you know, then it slows down a little bit in the middle. You know, there's that, always that, that second act slump in a lot of these films. Um, and unfortunately, it did hit a bit of that where uh, it got a little repetitious during those zombie attack sequences uh, that I mentioned earlier. But it is, thankfully, uh, just over two hours. Uh, so it's not a, a, a tremendously long film. Stay through the credits, not all the way through the credits, but there is a mid-credits sequence that is absolutely worth seeing um, and you know kind of ties into other films that you've seen and other films that you will see I appreciated that they did that I appreciated the appearance of the Flash and the appearance of Batman and how it all ties together um, I liked that it was tied to Batman versus Superman and uh, you know and it, it is a response to the events of Batman versus Superman so if you find the DC Universe a dark place in in cinema I don't know that it's necessarily going to change your mind uh, you know, it, it's certainly not the type of universe, uh, the type of film that you get from Civil War or, you know, Iron Man or those Captain America films or, or Thor. You know, it's not a Marvel movie. It is very much a DC movie, but it is more fun than the previous two DC movies have been. And I think uh, whatever reshoots they did or, you know, the, the director and the actors um, and the writer definitely put forth an effort to make this a, a, a more humorous, a more fun, even though it's darkly humorous film. And Suicide Squad, I give it a thumbs up. Uh, I saw it in 3D. It, I don't know that you need to see it in 3D. Um, it didn't seem to lend much to the film, in my opinion, but it is certainly worth seeing on the big screen. And it is certainly worth seeing, uh, you know, before you can have everything ruined for you, because it will be ruined. Uh, you know, they've already ruined a good portion of this film, uh, even before it was done filming. We knew Batman was in the film. So, see it. See it early. And uh, if you are a fan of DC characters, you will not be disappointed in your portrayals of the Joker, or Harley Quinn, or Captain Boomerang, or Deadshot, or Killer Croc, who was fantastic in this film. Um, really, really recommend seeing Suicide Squad. Really enjoyed it. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, feedback on my review, leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'd be happy to answer any follow-up questions you have. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more. And we'll talk to you guys next time.